Yeah, well, we've been talking, this is the last session of uh, presentation of paper before Diana's uh, presentation, and uh, I'd like to make some connections first between the previous sessions and this one. We were talking about issues of identity and language previously, and pedagogy, uh, and agency, and I think this, this session brings all of these, uh, these issues together. Uh, in the, I could, I would summarize this in uh, the terms that Jamil just used as an infernal paradox, uh -huh. uh, where we have these issues of mastery involved. Uh, infernal paradox in the sense of we have coexisting elements which, uh, like in any paradox, they seem to contradict each other, but they have a mutual existence which defies any rational, linear form of thinking. And this uh, it throws into a conflict all our notions of pedagogy, which are necessarily linear, which were, we assume linear and rational, you know, which uh, assume that we're leading people to a, from a place of not knowing to a place of knowing, from a place of um, primitivity to a place of progress or advancement. Um, so what, what we're seeing here is this, uh, the paradox that we live uh, politically in, in uh, dealing with notions of modernity, rationality, humanism, these are issues that have been coming up and even when we talk about subjecthood, identity, agency, all of these where we are unquestionably presupposing uh, cultural, uh, cultural concepts which uh, when confronted with the indigenous they come back to us and stare us in our face. Um, these cultural concepts are, 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 are available and visible if you want to see them in any kind of transnational or translocal or even a transcultural encounter. And we've been talking about these global flows. They're there. Uh, they're masked by terms like globalization, which assumes homogenization and universalism. Uh, so uh, I think as we deal with indigenous issues, all of these things come back to us. Uh, so uh, uh, yesterday, Sean mentioned uh, uh, one of the things he said was, to heal is to know the wound. Um, but uh, Sean, what I saw was that you're dealing with this paradox of identity, uh, but it comes out to me in a, in a different way. You know, you're talking about the seven fires. Was it the five fires? Seven fires. Seven fires. Uh, and you presented them, because PowerPoint, I suppose, only allows us to do it in this way, linearly, right? Uh, but uh, I think we can see what you, Jessica, and Jamil were showing us, that the past is not a place. Right? Our concept of the past is already cultural. Right? And we tend to inherit this view of history in the past from modernism as being <coughs> linear and progressive. Uh, and we're always distancing ourselves from the past, and shamanic cultures remind us that the past is always accessible from wherever we are. And I think this is taken out uh, graphically in, um, in both Jessica's presentation and Jamili's work, the, the question of the, the relationship between the still and the film. Right? The still represents the capture, uh, and the film represents the cont continuity and the flow. And the capture is not necessarily preservation. Right? And in modernity, I think we are, our concept of the past is as if it is there, preserved, and that's our sense of the archive, right? It only builds up like capital, right? The more we have of an archive, the richer we are, uh, or the more progressive we are, the more civilized we are. Right? And here, that we are talking about an archive of memory, which doesn't build up, which is constantly being reconstituted, right? It's not something of, uh, which can be seen materialistically in terms of substance. And when I say the material, I'm coming back to this issue which the three of you already raised and which we've touched on indirectly before when Diana raised the issue of humanism and Diana and Ian and uh, they're talking about the concept of humanism and this brings in issues of, issues of materiality. So what is the real that we're talking about? Right? And yesterday we, um, we, we mentioned uh, the issue of uh, synesthesia and uh, uh, when we were talking about uh, Rancière, uh, if, 
uh, if we change our, our conception of from rationality, let's say, to sensation, right, in, as the means of perception, uh, when in our hum modernist humanist tradition we privilege rationality, uh, the mind over the body, and if we, if we question that and we bring the body back and talk about sensation as a, a form of intelligibility and in producing knowledge, then we open ourselves to different views, different possibilities of art and knowledge. And that was a little bit present also in the, those indigenous texts that I didn't analyze, but I showed you. But it, it, these are not visible when we're talking about literacy, for example. Right? The fact that texts can be produced by bodies and not necessarily by minds. Our concept of literacy is something rational, related to speech, which is connected to the mind right? and distance from the body. And here we've seen uh, uh, bodily languages, right? uh, falling, hitting the ground, touching, uh, tattoos, again touching, and the, the direct references to the pinto, which are maybe requires translation. <laughs> Uh, the uh, pinto, which the women were talking about, I don't know what the word would be in Eng Canadian English. Cock. Cock. Okay. Uh, so, so I mean, th this brings us back here to a different issue of language and morality and the Facebook issue of what is nudity and what is not. So we're talking about categories. Right? Uh, and Sean was talking about pedagogy, which is trying to, to bring this back. And my question to Sean would be, to what extent are you aware, Sean, that um, I was looking for this, but perhaps you hadn't, this wasn't your intention in developing this. To what extent are you, are you using an indigenous pedagogy, or are you using, a, let's say, a Western pedagogy in its linearity, its rationality, uh, how, how does this play out? Because you were also talking about going back to the, the possibility of going back to the fourth fire, right? So if you can go back to the fourth fire, then it's not a linear sequence, right? And, and our classroom pedagogies, and you're referring to the four walls of an institutional school, right? Uh, our classrooms assume linear space, concrete space, and we, here we're talking about a space which is a, a different kind of uh, sensation and sensi sensibility. So, and I'd like to know if that, how that is taken into account in your concept of pedagogy and healing. Uh, Jessica, uh, I'm not sure I have any questions for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, but maybe uh, you and Jamili both have showed, uh, at least one of the films that Jamili showed, the Shapiri was, it actually had the stills separated, right, at one point. I don't know how this play, this is played out in the rest of the film because this was only a trailer. But uh, you're talking about the stills of uh, Calder's well-produced stills, which which confuse us because they could. Uh, uh, we we tend to see photographs as as uh, documents which archive the past. Right? As the past is preserved in them, and a still is only is only there in its uh, role in the continuity of the film, right? mm -hmm. which challenges our notions of the past. Is the past something which remains as it was, right? or is it constantly open to reinterpretation and to be reaccessed? Our notions of the archive and history are all... I'd like to know how you see that and how Jamili sees that as well. It's coming back to biopolitics, and uh, this is very important in, uh, in concepts of uh, political agency, for example. right? Uh, where uh, possession of the land is referred to in terms of uh, uh, the archives of the memory. And this is what's being challenged. And Jamili mentioned part of this infernal par paradox in Brazil is the federal governments, at, at uh, the same time it's being open to indigenous issues and privileging agro-industry. So um, where do we stand? I'd like to know what how would you conclude in your issues? You've raised these issues, and what would you, what would you say about them? And uh, you too, Sean, uh, you, you showed us this pedagogical proposal of uh, basically healing, right? which is uh, uh, reconnecting people with memory and their naming ceremonies. You mentioned this as well. Uh, but I saw this, how do you deal with this paradox? You're using a very rational, linear, sequential kind of uh, pedagogical language. And you're, and you're dealing with the possibility of reaccessing 
uh, I hate to use the term spiritual because very often spiritual is, is used, we understand spiritual as being that what is dependent on belief, that which is not real, that which is a fiction. Right? And in all of these shamanic cultures, the spiritual is uh, as important and, uh, and real as the real, as the rational. And, um, where Jamili ended by referring to Vivesa uh, Castro, what are our real worlds? What we have basically is a conflict of, of real worlds rather than anything else. <coughs> Thank you.